All right, Facebook is open sourcing some code designed to get the public involved in helping to develop its computer vision technology. Joining us to discuss this effort is Nicole Lee from Engadget. How's it going, Nicole? Hey, how, how is everyone? Doing awesome. <laughs> it's great to see your face and hear your voice. Um, so tell us a little bit about this. First, this project is aimed at a big challenge when it comes to analyzing images, and basically that's creating context around everything inside an image and not just a man or a dog. Why is this important to Facebook? So there, I mean, Facebook is freq more frequently than ever is about having visual content, you know, photos and videos, like almost, almost the entirety of your newsfeed these days is something that's very visually rich, whether mm -hmm. it's photos or videos or GIFs or whatever it is. So I think it's really important for Facebook to enhance computer vision. Uh, there are several different use cases for this. Um, very recently, they have made um, their so something called autom 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 sorry, automatic alt text, which means that the photo, the captioning of photos is automatic. That means if you're a blind user who can't really see, you can't you know see photos. Obviously, you can use uh, something called an um, iOS screen reader, which is, is a specific software to basically scan what is what is on a page. So um, with automatic alt text. Um, even without specific tags in the photo, you can know what's in it. So the photo will say, person, dog. So at least the blind user knows it's a person, it's a photo of a person and a dog, right? right. Which in this is, that sounds really simple, but for people with low vision or a blind person, like that is something that is very valuable information. But that's just scratching the surface because a photo is more than just a person and a dog. It could be a per like what's the person doing with the dog? Is like is it like is he throwing throwing a ball? Is the person tall? Is the dog tiny? Like there's there's so many different mm -hmm. variables. Like are they in a field? Is it a house? Like there's so many there's so many different variables that it is just scratch, scratching the surface of what a machine can see. What a uh, what is the benefit to to Facebook in kind of releasing this code to the community in in the way that they're doing on GitHub? I think they're because it's such a complicated thing, you know, um, machine, computer vision is so complicated. Like, like I say, again, doing all of these things, it's such a, such a complicated task that the more people that are able to help fix the problem, the better it is, the faster it's able to um, sort of improve itself by having the community help in and pitch in and solve any problems that are involved. Um, so tell us about the, so it's basically it's three blocks of code and they each have their own kind of specific application. Tell, tell us about those, kind of what they do exactly. Sure. Um, it's, some, it's a little technical, but basically it's something called deep mask, sharp mask, and multi path net. And all three combined um, work into a visual recognition system that tries to discern what's on an image at the pixel level. So what Deep, what deep mask and sharp mask do is that they go in, okay, there are three different things in this picture. I don't know what they are, but there's three things. And and they'll sort of outline them in, in the in the in, in the in the image. And then multipath them is like, okay, based on all based on the community feedback, based on all the algorithm and the millions and millions of examples that we have, we can figure out this is kind of a, the shape of a dog. This is kind of the shape of a person. And they'll sort of sort of label those segments individually. Now Eventually, Facebook wants this computer vision to be smart enough so that you can actually like, just can actually physically take them and then move them around the image. Um, you can eventually use this computer vision technology for augmented reality applications. So, for example, you can sort of imagine Pokemon Go is an example that they, they came up with. Uh, imagine a Pokemon Go character hiding behind a table or hiding behind uh, a chair, and it's, it'll become it make make it a lot more interactive. And I think for Facebook anyway, it'll make being able to identify objects that much easier. So, for example, with Google Photos, you can just say you can just sort of Google ice cream, um, and it'll sort of come up with all these photos of ice cream. Even though you've never tagged those photos ice cream, it just knows it's a photo of an ice cream. So that's so it'll, it'll make searching photos easier. It'll make identifying photos easier. It'll make you know low vision accessibility easier. And I think the implications are there for even video as well. So will we be able to tell how many calories are in that ice cream by taking a photo of it? Yeah, that's exactly kind of where they're going with this actually. Like they want this to happen. They want they want this so that you can uh, bring up a photo of 
that ice cream and it will tell you how many calories it is. It will tell you like the, its nutritional value. Um, so that's kind of where Facebook wants to go with the, the augmented reality part of it. Jason just searched his Google photos for ice cream and there's just like a dozen pictures of his children. Lots, eating of, ice cream. lots of ice cream pictures. <laughs> Which is just I like, love it's it. kind of, yeah. I love hearing those keywords <laughs> with Google photos and being like, I wonder what I've got that falls in the ice cream category. It's, so it's then so uh, open sourcing this, this is kind of the same as Google open sourcing DeepMind, right? And then there's, that's how we are getting these new applications, sort of like uh, Prisma and that sort of thing. Yeah, and I think it's, AI especially, out of all the different technologies involved, AI is the fee one field that is open source the most, I feel like. Facebook has open sourced like, their language processing, their natural language processing, as well as the hardware they use to even make the AI possible. They've, they've open sourced that. So it's one of those sort of rare beasts in the Silicon Valley world where like, okay, share it around. It doesn't matter because the more the merrier, the, the, the more the merrier, the more the, the better, the easier it is to advance this technology forward, the more people will be have sharing it and creating with it and, and experimenting with it. Yeah, that's that's an interesting uh, observation, but you're absolutely right. And such a such a hot button thing right now. So we're talking about photos, obviously. Uh, what about extending this sort of work into full motion video? Um, are we a ways away from that type of analysis? It is a lot harder because the objects are moving. Yeah. The um, moving images are really much, there's a high level of complexity involved. Sure. But they've, they've already done it. Like Facebook has told me that they've already identified which videos are cat videos and which videos are videos of food. So they've no, they know cats and they know food so far. <laughs> um, no, I mean, really, they got the essentials <laughs> yeah. in, in <laughs> internet culture. <laughs> they you know cats and they know food. So I, from from there on, you know, we'll see what, you know, we'll see where they go from here, but they've sort of identified those kinds of videos. So, yeah. And I think importantly for Facebook, as they move forward with live, especially with live, um, they want to be able to say, okay, this video has explicit content. Maybe we shouldn't put that up so high in the list. Maybe we should not, you know, sort of block that out or something like that. So there are, so there are a lot of cases like this where I think as live becomes more and more popular and as, as content becomes a little, a lot harder to control, like shootings and you know, all of those things that are happening on live, I think it's a lot more important for them to figure out how to classify that content and make sure they're not exposing people to the wrong things. For sure. That's a big, big <laughs> challenge when you're coming to, yeah, when you're talking yeah. about live video and they, they've already kind of encountered that <laughs> struggle uh, in its short, short time. I'm sure we'll see a lot more, many more examples of that. Uh, Nicole Lee, it's always a pleasure getting to talk to you. Thanks so much uh, for coming on today to chat with us. Tell us, tell people where they can follow all your work online. You can go to engadget.com and at Nicole. You're one, you're one of those people that got the first name on Twitter somehow. Yeah. So excellent. And Nicole, very easy to find. Thank you, Nicole Lee. Thanks. <laughs> Have a good night.